I'm Dr. James Stavitz with OrthoHeal, and I'm going to show you the Flexio radial gutter splint. We see radial gutter splints and casts usually uh, for a second and third metacarpal issue. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're focusing on two and three right here, as well as the second and third phalange. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to get my measurements. I'm gonna measure my patient's wrist circumference. I'm gonna measure it in centimeters, okay? I'm gonna go ahead. Each of the flexio braces comes with a tape measure. And this is, she's got a 15 centimeter wrist. So 15 centimeters, I'm gonna go ahead and look at my chart here. I'm gonna find the radial gutter. I'm gonna find that circumference. 15 centimeters, it's right in the middle of a small. So I need a size small for this patient. Looks like I got a size small right here. Perfect, you can see radial gutter splint. You can also see the expiration date as well. So I'm gonna open up the box and I'm gonna take out this bag. I'm gonna take out the Velcro strap and I'm also going to take out the instructions for use. The instructions for use are really important. And any patient and any clinician that deals with the Flexio braces must be comfortable with the instructions for use. They must read the, the general inspection information as well as its intended use, the do's and don'ts, policies and feedback, indications and contraindications as well. So all of those questions that you may have regarding indications, contraindications, do's and don'ts, and general inspection ideas of the brace are all within the instruction for use. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. I have my Velcro strap that I'm going to use in a little bit. And I also have my brace that's in this bag. And the reason why it's in this black bag is because the brace is very light sensitive. So any exposure to light, whether it be artificial or natural, is going to increase the likelihood of premature curing. Okay, before I take the splint out of the bag, I'm gonna need to make sure that I protect myself and I put on these gloves just in case there's any kind of gel leakage out of the silicone. I still wanna make sure that I protect myself. I have my gloves on and I'm gonna pull the brace out of the bag. First thing that I wanna do is I wanna inspect the brace. I wanna make sure that there's no cracks or leaks in the silicone, making sure that the resin stays in, the gel isn't leaking out. This side looks good. This is the outer layer. This is the inner layer. This is the layer that's going to be on the patient's skin. This is a, a rubber foam. And again, you wanna make sure that there's no crack, that there's no silicone leaks, that there's no gel anywhere on here. If there is any rips, any tears, any cracks, you can go ahead and repackage it and send it back to the manufacturer and they'll send you a new one. Okay, so this looks good to go. You can see here, this is where the, fourth, the second and third digits are going to go right in here when I go ahead and close this up. And you could see the elasticity of the forearm. There's some patients that might have really small fingers and really large forearms. So this, this elasticity helps those patients and helps kind of mold the way that their body and their anatomy is naturally occurring. Okay, so now I wanna check and inspect my patient's arm. I'm looking for any abrasions, any cuts, any wounds, any infections. I'm checking for a pulp. Checking the cap refill. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Good. Check dermatomes. I would check all that bilaterally as well. All right. So I'm ready to put the brace on the patient. And you can see this is the little thumb wedge right here. That's where the thumb is going. I'm on the radial side, making sure that this is nice and snug and still making sure and inspecting the brace, making sure none of the silicone is open and the gel is leaking. 
Okay, I'm gonna have my patient go up into elbow flexion, just like that, perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the zipper on the ulnar side. Connect it and pull it down, right? And I have it on a little bit more, so I'm just gonna go ahead and readjust the brace. So as I'm distracting away from the patient's skin so I don't catch her, I'm also pulling towards the elbow, making sure I'm going down that ulnar shaft. All right, we're good. And now I wanna take this Velcro strap here. I wanna go and do it. And I'm gonna wrap this around the patient's fingers, okay? This is gonna be nice and snug, but not painful. I'm gonna run, and I'm asking my patient if she's doing okay. She's doing okay? Good. One of the wonderful things about this brace is its breathability, so we don't need to worry about any maceration in between the, the digits as opposed to if you were in a fiberglass cast with a lot of cast padding and stockinette, then you might get that maceration if these fingers are together for a long period of time. With this splint, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna do one last inspection. Good, good. Now, the way that I want this to be immobilized is I want my patient to be in slight wrist extension finger flexion at these two digits. So if you could, can you just hold that position just like that, okay? And this is the area that I'm going to cure first, okay? This is the area that I'm going to cure first because if the patient does have a metacarpal fracture, this might be painful and uncomfortable for that. So I'm gonna cure this first. This way she can relax that she doesn't need to worry about holding this position and the silicone and the resin can just do the work for her. Okay, so before I start curing, what I need to do is I need to protect myself from the blue light and I need to make sure that my patient is also protected from the blue light, you okay? Okay, good. Now this is the Rizicure. This is the Rizicure, this is the blue light that is going to create and start up a chemical reaction that's going on inside the silicone that is going to solidify the material and ultimately make this completely solid and immobile. I'm gonna turn this light on. I'm gonna focus on the area that's injured first so it's nice and secure so the patient can just relax. And then every couple of seconds, you're gonna hear a beep. That beep is going to be an indication to me that I can move on to another area of the brace and start curing that hairy. Okay, I'm gonna constantly talk to my patient, make sure she's okay. Explain to her that she's gonna feel warm. It shouldn't be painful, but it will feel warm, okay? If, if at any point this gets uncomfortable, you let me know and we can stop, okay? And I'm continuing to inspect, making sure that there hasn't been any leakage. Right? That's one beep, and you could probably feel it already getting warm, and you could probably feel it already solidifying. What I'm definitely not going to do is I'm not going to shine this light in my patient's eyes. So I'm always going to be pointing the light down or out. Again, continuing to talk to your patient, making sure they're okay, okay? Good. I'm gonna come on up here one more time. You want to make sure you have a good distance away from your patient's brace. Okay, I'm going to go over here on the ulnar side where the zipper is. We're going to go one more right here. And then after this one, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to palpate around the patient's brace. And I'm going to see if there's any soft spots. All right, I'm gonna see if there's any soft spot. Not only am I looking for some soft, tender areas, but I'm also looking for the silicone to be mobile. If that silicone is mobile, that means that the resin inside has not solidified yet, and I might need to bring the light to it. 
So I'm going ahead. Again, so I've been my case team. You're doing okay. It can feel as nice and toasty. Good. And ping. All right. Now what I didn't do is I didn't take this, uh, this strap off for a reason. I wanted her fingers to be stable as I was carrying it, but I know that the blue light can't penetrate this Velcro strap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the Velcro strap off completely. And I'm going to redo this area. It's nice and soft because the, again, the blue light can't penetrate this area. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that this is nice and secure. Talking to my patient, make sure she's okay. You can feel it starting to solidify a little bit more. I can feel it. I'm just going to do this one time right here. And then I'm going to do another one right here. They make sure it's nice and close together so the patient's hand and finger are nice and stable. Good. We're nice and solidified. I'm going to reapply that strap. Right. Just to add a little bit extra support. You don't need that at this point, but it does apply a little bit extra support again. What I love about this brace is that there is no chances of maceration because of the, the, the breathability of it. I'm going to, to patient instruction is very important. So I'm going to tell my patient if over the next 24 to 48 hours, you experience any type of allergic reaction or any type of reaction at all from the brace, make sure you call us and come see us so we can take this off. Okay. All right. I'm also going to tell my patient, you can bathe with this, you can shower with this, you can go into the ocean, you can go into the lake, you can go into the pool. Our only recommendation is that if you are going into fall water or chlorinated water, afterwards you thoroughly rinse it with fresh water. Okay? And if you want to make your skin dry a little bit faster, instead of using a towel that might not work, right? Because you do have these little circles right here. What you could do is take a hair dryer and on the cool setting, go ahead and blow it. And that'll take care of that for you. Okay. I'm continuing to infect braces fully on patients been fully educated. I'm going to do one last cap refill. Good. And I can also check dermatomes. I can, can, can you feel all that? Yeah. Right. I can also check der dermatom throughout the entire brace, which I can do in a regular typical fiberglass cast. Can you feel that? I yes. obviously check bilaterally for that. Okay. So now we're good to take this off. I'm going to take this strap off right here. I'm going to take these splitters here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these ribs in a straight line, one by one, nice and symmetrical, all the way down, proximally, all the way to, to distilling. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to jam this in and try to cut the black rubber. The black rubber is what's protecting her skin from the, the silicone. So I'm just going to go just a little bit, and you'll see. You could see where you're cutting could see the whole way, nice and beefy. There's a lot of leverage on these scissors, so you don't need a lot of force. You may think that it takes a lot of force because you're breaking the silicone, but you really don't. Almost done, patient, are you okay? Good, so you can talk to the patient. I don't even need to go all the way up there. I'm going to unzip. Plate and then remove. I'm gonna do one last inspection. You could see I got a couple of little particles from the silicone here that only happened because I just cured it a couple minutes ago. Within 24 hours, if I were to break it, I wouldn't have any of these little loose particles here. Skin looks good. One last dermatome check. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? All right? You got pulse, good. Cap refill, check by laterally.